Hi, and welcome to this week's Coffee Break Catch Up. I'm Mark, and I'm delighted to be back here for the roundup of the week's news for all things Coffee Break. Now, hopefully everything will be working according to plan this week. Hopefully you can hear me better. Hopefully you can see me. Hopefully our cameras are working. Uh, that one should be working. That's our Coffee Break one, and here I am here. So everything seems to be fine. Do let us know where you're watching from and of course, which language you're learning. Now, there's lots to do this week and we've got an interesting talking point coming up a little bit later. We're talking about motivation and the motivation, first of all, for learning another language and also how to maintain your motivation when you're learning a language. That's coming up a little bit later. So if you've got any thoughts on that, then feel free to post them in the comments. Now, I can see some comments coming through. We've got some people watching. We've got Sandra uh, watching on YouTube. Yeah, this is all working. We've got Jake also watching on YouTube and Rita joining us too on YouTube. Um, so it all seems to be functioning as it should. That means we are good to go and we're good to get on with the show. So to begin with, uh, let's find out what's coming up. As usual, we've got some Coffee Break news for you. We're going to be sharing the latest episodes of uh, All Things Coffee Break. We have our talking point, as I said, an interesting one all about motivation. And then, of course, our cultural roundup for the week when we'll be sharing what's been happening uh, or what's about to happen, rather, in different parts of uh, the language speaking world, the, <laughs> the speaking world of, of Spanish, French, German and Italian. Lots of you are saying hello. Brilliant to see you here today. Do let us know where you're watching um, and we'll hopefully see a little bit later on uh, when we can move over to some of the contents. Sorry, the comments rather, not the contents. Okay, so uh, let us get straight on with the Coffee Break news. I think it's time for some news. So to begin with this week, we have some news about our latest podcast episodes. Let me bring these slides in. Uh, first of all, we have the second episode in our Coffee Break German magazine series. And the Coffee Break German magazine is aimed at learners who have already uh, covered season two of the magazine, or sorry, season two of Coffee Break German, because the magazine aims to take you on that bit further and give you an opportunity to practice your German, hearing more content, more uh, vocabulary and more interesting grammar points also. So that's the Coffee Break uh, German magazine, which is now uh, with episode two. And in episode two, we are heading to Vienna, the beautiful city of Vienna, the capital of Austria. And uh, in particular, one area of Vienna called the Prater. Now, the Wiener Prater is a huge park in the middle of Vienna. And as you can see from the photo, there's a lovely Riesenrad, uh, a big wheel, um, a sort of traditional big wheel there. So the episode that we've just released is about the Wiener Prater, or Spaß in Wiener Prater, so fun in the Wiener Prater. Um, and that is now available on uh, Coffee Break German. Secondly, our Coffee Break French magazine continues, and this time we're heading to Brittany, to the, the, the area of Bretagne in the northwest of France. And in particular there, we're focusing on the language, Breton, Le Breton, which is a language that's spoken there, and it's a Celtic language. So it's uh, linked to languages like Irish, Welsh, Manx, Scottish Gaelic, and so on. And Breton is spoken there, and it's a, a very interesting language because it's undergone something of a revitalization, une revitalisation, oh là là, une revitalisation récemment. So if you want to find out more about the, the revitalization of Breton, then have a look at episode eight episode 7 of the Coffee Break French magazine show. Now, uh, our Coffee Break Italian magazine is, of course, continuing, and our next episode is due on the 23rd of September. So that is uh, coming up just on uh, Monday, and we will be heading south, I believe, in our Coffee Break Italian magazine uh, to a very interesting area, but I'll not tell you all any more about that right now. Moving on, we have, of course, our tune for Tuesday, and this week's song is La Chanson de Prévert. I wonder if you're familiar with Prévert. Prévert is a poet, a very well-known po poet in, in France, Jacques Prévert, and he writes very accessible poetry. Um, so if you're a learner, then the poems of Prévert are very accessible. Now, the song is a song by Serge Gainsbourg, 
and uh, we are focusing on this song this week in, in our Tune for Tuesday. If you're not yet familiar with Tune for Tuesday, it's our weekly musical post. So every Tuesday we put a, a post on about a different song. And uh, these songs are all available on a Spotify playlist and a YouTube playlist. So regardless of where you get your music, you'll be able to access our playlists. So check out the Chanson de, de Prévert on our Tune for Tuesday this week. We also have our question of the week, and this has just gone out today. So our question of the week, what did you do at the weekend? En français, qu'est-ce que tu as fait ce weekend? Auf Deutsch, was hast du am Wochenende gemacht? In Italian, uh, que cosa fai questo fin de semana? Uh, and in, in Spanish, rather, que hiciste este fin de semana? So, muy interesante, and we have, of course, our uh, colleagues who are answering that question. And you can also answer the question by joining us on our social media channels, be that on Instagram or on Facebook, where we're inviting you to ask to answer that question. What did you do at the weekend? It's a good way to practice your past tenses. And remember, depending on which language you're using, you might want to vary your tenses. You might be wanting to talk about what the weather was like in French, for example, when you're talking about what you did at the weekend, in which case you can use some perfects for talking about what you did at the weekend and then describe the weather using the imperfect tense. And the same would go for Italian and Spanish, although with Spanish, chances are you'll be using some preterites too. So you can challenge yourself to do some speaking or to, to do some writing um, and practice your language skills there on uh, our question of the week feature. Okay, moving on then. And uh, there is an important announcement for anyone involved in intermediate French or intermediate Spanish because our Coffee Break Masterclass is now available for registration. This uh, went out just the past couple of days. So if you are an intermediate learner of French or Spanish, then you may well be interested in taking part in the class of October 2019 for the Coffee Break French or Spanish Masterclass. So this involves six months of modules. Basically, you get one module per month and the modules are on different topics. So in French, you'll be doing things like tricky verbs. Uh, you'll be doing pronouns. You'll be doing an introduction to the subjunctive, how to sound more French, things like that. In the Spanish modules, you'll be doing things like uh, false friends. You'll be looking again at tricky verbs, um, tricky things in Spanish like por en para, que en cual, and so on. And we're actually going to be doing some webinars about the, the Coffee Break Masterclass, and they're going to be starting next week. So if you would like to know more about the Coffee Break Masterclass, then make sure you tune into those webinars, and we'll give you some samples of the kind of materials that are covered there. Because the Masterclass is not for everyone. It's not for everyone, perhaps, if you're very advanced in language, it's not for you. It's for you if you're at an intermediate stage of the language. If you've done, for example, Coffee Break French Season 2, then... Coffee Break Masterclass will be for you. Or indeed, if you're working on season three, it will also be perfect for you. So that's Coffee Break French and Spanish Masterclasses, both available for sign up. And if you'd like to find out more about the Masterclass, then you can go to, I think I've got the address up here. Um, there we go, coffeebreakmasterclass.com. Very straightforward. You can have a look at the Coffee Break French Masterclass. Okay. Um, I think that's almost it. Oh, no, one other thing, and that is this week we've been very lucky to have uh, two students with us. We've had uh, Neve and Sophie with us this week for work experience, and it's been lovely having them around. They have been very busy doing lots of things with us, and we are actually going to be running another work experience week. So if you happen to be a Scottish teacher or indeed a Scottish student at a, a local school here near Glasgow, then you may well be interested in taking part in our Work Experience Week. Um, and that's going to be happening on, let me just bring this up, the 21st to the 25th of October. So if that is of interest to you, then please get in touch. Uh, you'll be able to find out more about the Work Experience uh, at the link, uh, which perhaps the, the team could post in the uh, comments. And indeed, we've got Neve and Sophie behind the scenes today of the, the catch-up, and hopefully they can help out by posting some of these things in the comments. Right, that is the news for this week. So it's time now to move on to our talking point. And as I say, our talking point is an interesting one this week. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are for our talking point this week. What is the talking point? Well, we're talking about motivation, motivation for learning languages. Why are you 
learning a language. Why would you want to learn a language? What are the interesting things that you can do with the language that you're learning? And is that motivation coming from something else? For example, because uh, you've been asked to learn a language for your work, or is that motivation coming from inside of you because you want to, in, uh, to, to connect with a culture or to, to speak to family and so on? There are lots and lots of different reasons for learning languages. And there have been many studies done. Let me just see if I can bring in these slides. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, but for example, this was a study done by Dutton and Meyer in 2007 when they asked lots of adult learners um, why are you learning a language? And you can see here, there are different reasons. Some people are learning a language for travel purposes, for personal development, just because they enjoy learning a language, to assist them with their current job, to communicate with family, to work or live abroad at some point. They want to enhance their CV, get a new job, uh, or just to take part more significantly in community life. Perhaps they didn't have the opportunity to learn a language at school, or perhaps they want to support their children's learning, or perhaps they weren't good at the language at school and want another chance at learning this language. So lots of different opportunities here to, uh, or sort of lots of different reasons to learn a language. And what I'd like to find out is why you are learning a language. What is it that motivated you to learn a language? It would be really interesting to see from the comments, and we are broadcasting this on YouTube and on a number of our Coffee Break uh, Facebook pages. So within your comments area, post your answer as to why you're learning a language. I'm gonna give you a minute to do this. So 60 seconds, let me see if I can just bring in the right button here for the timer. Uh, so over to you, why are you learning a language? Okay, your 60 seconds are up, but if you're still typing, keep typing because we'll, we'll be looking at some answers here um, and it'd be really interesting to see your answer as to why you are learning a language. We've also asked the whole team, and or at least the team who were available at the time when we asked, um, so we'll be sharing that with you in just a moment. Uh, let us see what you're saying. So first of all, we've got uh, El Dorado on YouTube who's saying, I'd love to study in Italy. Fantastic. It's always great to have that kind of uh, motivation to, to be able to have a, an end goal in sight of, of wanting to study or to live in a different country. Alex on Facebook is saying, I love it when I can communicate on holiday. I think it makes such a huge difference to your travel when you can communicate with, with other people, with, with real native speakers of the, the language, because, well, sometimes it, it, it makes a good impression, but sometimes you end up getting larger portions in, in bars and restaurants, which is always good too. Um, we've got Barbara who's saying past travel in Italy, hoping for more. We hope you've managed to get back to Italy very soon. Uh, we've got uh, Albata saying to communicate with people. Um, fantastic there. Uh, VM is saying I started to learn German for work, but I'm enjoying it and continuing it with the lessons. And I think that's another thing where, again, we're talking about motivation and when you're encouraged to do something for a particular reason, sometimes the, motion, the, the motivation transfers and you actually end up doing something, it goes from something that you have to do to something that you want to do. And I think that's a, a wonderful point to reach. Uh, Brian is saying to enjoy other cultures. And I think opening, a, a, or so, sorry, taking a language, learning a language can open up those other cultures. You can understand things so much better. Uh, let's just roll back here. We've got uh, 
Sorry, I'm just looking for some other comments here. We've got Bill who says, j'espère prendre ma retraite en France. So Bill's hoping to retire to France and therefore being able to speak French uh, would be very, very useful. As, as Indeed, Bill, thank you. Uh, Raoul is saying, my motivation came from a desire to learn enough of the la Italian language to say yes, please, and thank you to the family of our friend in Dolzago di Lecco. Once I began, I realized how much fun it was, so I kept getting deeper. And there we go, another example of once you start something, you realize how much fun it is and the difference it makes being able to use, uh, in this case, the language. Well done, Raoul. Um, we've got Gracie who is saying, I'm learning French for the love of it, but at the same time, I just know that it will open doors for me to connect with people, to perhaps live there or find work that may involve using that language. I've always had a fascination with the language as I'm a Mandarin English speaker already, and I want something quite far and new from it. Fantastic, Gracie. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, Holly says, I'm going to Italy for vacation. Perfect reason to, to learn. Um, Alex, I think we've had Alex already saying, uh, I love it when I can communicate on holiday. Um, Raul adding something else here. I was in Italy for 11 days and was so thrilled that I was able to carry on conversations in restaurants, hotels and gift shops, all thanks to Coffee Break Italian. Grazie mille. Prego, prego, Raul. Um, okay, so we've got uh, Sergio, who's saying, ciao from Florida. I love to travel and to communicate with people on, in their native language. Perfect. Gary, I just became an, an Italian citizen. Thanks, great grandfather. Well, congratulations, uh, Gary, on becoming a, an Italian citizen. citizen. Jake is saying, I'm learning French, Spanish, and Hebrew. I'm learning French because I'm interested in their culture, Spanish because it's super useful in the US, and Hebrew because I love the music and literature. So three different reasons there for learning three different languages. Fantastic, Jake. Thank you for that. Sandra is saying, because I have two German grandsons, and they and my daughter live in Germany. And a great reason, family reasons, when you can connect with people and very important people in the case of, of your grandsons um, and being able to, to speak to them as they use the language. Uh, Marlene is saying, I'm a language nerd and enjoy languages. Me too. Uh, I'm learning Italian now, mostly as a treat for myself and to enhance our trips to Italy. Thanks so much, Marlene. Gracie has added something else here. Motivation comes from doing what I love too, so I'm passionate about learning. I love movies and I like to sing, so I try to incorporate that as well in how I learn to that language. Also, I miss immerse myself with like-minded people, also to be unafraid of making a mistake in speaking and to just enjoy and learn that. Oftentimes, we feel a native speaker might be offended, but actually, I think people love the effort of communicating and connecting. I totally agree. Gracie, I think it's so important to make that effort because making the effort can have such a huge reward. Thank you for that. Uh, Osvaldo is saying personal development to improve my CV and absolutely another great reason to learn. Jay lives in a university town uh, and also for travel. Bill is saying that he gets together with a French teacher, qui est française, to help keep me motivated. I also communicate daily with French friends online. There are so many comments today, it's fantastic. Um, Hazel, impar italiano, perché mi piace la lingua e mi piace usarlo quando sono in Italia. So I like uh, learning Italian because I like the language and I like using it when I'm in Italy. Uh, Jennifer is asking, where can I get one of those sweet coffee break mugs? Yeah, we've got our mugs here uh, and there's some behind me. Um, well, these aren't available for sale, but if you send us a postcard, you might be in with the chance of winning one, Jennifer. Um, Phoebe is saying, j'apprends le français afin de parler à, de, avec, ma famille, avec la famille de mon fiancé. Sorry, I got middle, muddled up there, Phoebe. Um, so Phoebe's learning French so that she can speak with her fiancé's family. Um, Cassio is uh, saying, when the regular Coffee Break Italian lessons will resume, we'll come back to that in a moment. But Sandra is saying, I love languages. I am uh, an English-Spanish translator, Italian background, want to keep visiting Italy, studying Italian, try to study Finnish. Wow. Uh, tricky language and reading and listening to some French languages bring the world closer to home and that is a fantastic point to end this little section but before we do end this section thank you all for your comments um, before we do let's find out a little more about the motivation of our team for learning languages because we asked that question why are you learning a language to the members of the Radio Lingua team over the past couple of days so here you are one of my main motivations for learning another language is not only to be able to communicate with people from different parts of the world, but also to discover other cultures and ways of life. 
that's something I found really interesting is to compare other cultures with my own and I find it's something that's really broadened my horizons as well. My motivation to learn a language is to be able to speak to my family. So I'm quarter Colombian and I would love to be able to speak to distant family. So when I was 16, I learned Spanish and I'm so happy that I can do it now. My motivation for learning another language is because I find it really fascinating learning how different languages are built up. And it's really fun being able to communicate with people in their own languages. My motivation for learning a language is really firstly to communicate with people. I love visiting different countries and being able to communicate with the people who are native to that country. I love watching films in the foreign language. I think it's much more, uh, much more of a rich experience and it really just enhances your life. My motivation for learning a language is it's a good challenge and I like challenging myself. Um, also, when you get a basic conversation going, it's very rewarding. My main motivation for learning a language is all about communicating, communication. Um, for example, I was uh, in Portugal last summer uh, for a wedding and I loved the wedding, but I hated the fact that I could not communicate despite having learned uh, a few words. So my main languages are French and, and, and English and a bit of Spanish. And I always try to make sure that I always improve my vocabulary, my grammar, because I'm also a perfectionist. And that's it. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, learning languages opens the door to many new cultures, but my main motivation for learning a new language is to have more opportunities and enhance my CV. Uh, my motivation for learning a language is to communicate to other people and having experience like studying here in Scotland at uni. My reason for learning a language is so that when I'm older I will be able to travel and meet new friends which will make it easier and more fun. I started uh, learning languages because I basically fell in love with English when uh, uh, when I was in school uh, to the extent that that developed into into a passion for um, for foreign languages uh, in uh, in general so I decided to uh, to study uh, languages at university and then it turned into into a career so languages are still my my passion nowadays but I'm lucky enough to have turned my passion into into my career as well so i hope uh, it'll be the same uh, for you ciao so thanks to the the whole radio lingua team there who helped us well not the whole team the, the people who were available to to give her their thoughts there um for that video and in particular thanks to to neve and to sophie um, for being involved in that video to our work experience students who have been with us this week Okay, thank you for all your comments and your uh, contributions there because it's been a fascinating discussion about motivation and, and language learning. Um, one of the, the interesting things, I mean, there, there are still people commenting here and it's, it's really good to see that, but I think one of the interesting things here, if I just bring my slides back in, um, the, yeah, we were looking at different reasons for learning languages and there are two types of motivation. We've got extrinsic motivation, where you're taking part in something in order to get something, for example, taking part in a sport in order to win medals or staying longer at work in order to impress the boss, going to the same coffee shop in order to take advantage of that loyalty card that you have, or studying in order to get a good grade. But we also have what's called intrinsic motivation, and intrinsic motivation is when you get something out of it yourself. So taking part in a sport because you enjoy the sport or staying longer at work because you believe in your work, going to the same coffee shop because it's part of your routine or studying for school because you're interested in the topic. Now, there's nothing to say that one type of motivation is wrong and another type is right. Indeed, the types of motivation work together. So as we've seen in many of the, the comments, sometimes people start learning uh, a language for a particular reason and then that develops into something else. So you've started learning for work and then it actually develops into a love for that language or you've started learning a few things simply to get by and then it actually becomes something that you really enjoy and it develops into something bigger. So there's no right and wrong answer to all of this and it's really important that we understand that. It's all about using the opportunities that you have to take more advantage of learning the language and uh, seeing the value of that. Okay, it is time to move on because I think now what we're going to do is focus on our cultural update for the week. A 
As ever, we are bringing you a cultural update for the week. So this is uh, different things that are happening over the course of the coming weekend and indeed the coming week. And if you are able to get to these uh, events or celebrations or particular festivals or whatever, then fantastic. If not, well, you can read about them in the language that you're learning and that way you can improve your language skills. So let us have a look at our cultural recommendations for this week. I'll bring these back in. Uh, we've seen that slide. Let's move on now to our cultural recommendations. And uh, these are as follows. So starting with German this week, uh, we are off to the Oktoberfest. Well, we're not actually off to the Oktoberfest ourselves, but that would be very nice. But in this case, we're not going there. But it does start in Munich on the 21st of September and runs until the 6th of October. And of course, there are Oktoberfest celebrations everywhere. So if you fancy um, enjoying some Oktoberfest uh, celebrations, I'm sure you'll be able to find something somewhere. So that's the Oktoberfest uh, in uh, Munich or anywhere else uh, coming up this week. Our Italian recommendation is the Mondo Contadino in the Trentino area in, in Italy, which is the 21st and 22nd of September. And that's all about food and drink and, and, and celebrations. We are also looking at a music festival, the Musica Festival in Strasbourg. It's contemporary music. And uh, the Feria Nacional de Zacatecas in Mexico is our Spanish recommendation for this week. So, as I said before, if you're interested in any of these, then you need to make sure that you're subscribed to our Coffee Break Catch-Up newsletter. And that's where we send you all the links for everything that we've mentioned in the show, all the Coffee Break podcasts, all our new videos and so on, and also links to these cultural items. And that will include a text in English, if you don't speak that particular language, and a text in the language of the country. So, for example, a text about Oktoberfest in German, and you can you practice your German using that text or a Spanish uh, text about the Zacatecas festival. So what you need to do to access this is make sure you've subscribed to our newsletter. And you can access the newsletter at radiolingua.com slash newsletter. Okay, one final thing before we finish, and that is our voicemail line and our questions, because as you know, we are running the Coffee Break magazines at the moment. I've got some questions to answer. I know that we'll get back to the questions in just a moment, but we're running the Coffee Break magazines and that's for, at the moment, French, Italian and German. And if you have a question about the French language, the Italian language or the German language, then you can call our voicemail lines and uh, ask a question because we could potentially include that question in the episode and then give you an answer. But it's very important too that we also mention our Spanish magazine because that's going to be coming back soon and we need some questions. So if you do have a question and kind of intermediate level question uh, about Spanish, then we would love to hear from you. And it's really useful if you can send us that question either as a, a, a voice recording by email or use the website at coffeebreakquestions.com or indeed use our uh, voicemail lines. So you can call in the UK 0141 416 6880. Um, in the US it's 347 474 6880. And in Australia it's 08 7200 6880. And what happens when you call that number? Uh, you will hear uh, somebody from the team welcoming you and then you'll be asked to press, I think it's number one, if you've got a question and then uh, I'll speak to you on the, the recording and invite you to leave your question. And if you get mixed up while you're asking your question, don't worry, you can ask it again. You just press the hash key at the end and then you'll have different options like recording it again if you feel you get mixed up when you're asking the question. So don't worry, we won't use anything that would embarrass you. But we will potentially use your question in a future episode. So for French, German, Spanish, Italian, we'd love to hear your questions in order that we can include them in a future episode of the show. Okay, right. Let me see, because we've got some questions. So let me just turn back to, to this camera and we'll see if we can answer any questions that we've got here. Um, I did notice a couple coming in. Um, Cassio, that's right. Cassio asked, when will the regular Coffee, coffee Break Italian lessons uh, resume? So I think you're potentially referring to the likes of season one and season two. At the moment with Italian, we're focusing on the magazine, the Coffee Break Italian magazine. So there's a new episode of that on Monday. And the Italian magazine is about taking your Italian to the next stage. So what you've learned in season one and season two, you can take that further with the Coffee Break magazine. And at the moment, we're not planning right now uh, a season three. 
but we will be continuing with the magazine. We may well do a season three in the future, but that's yet to be decided. So I hope that answers your question, Cassio. Um, let's see. Um, there were a couple of um, a couple more questions. I, I see some more comments. Thank you for your comments um, about motivation. Here we've got a question from Gayatri. Is the Coffee Break Masterclass suitably only for intermediate learners? Will it be available next year in case one wants to read up and get to that level? Absolutely. So it is suitable for intermediate learners. If you've completed season two, then you would be uh, at an appropriate level for the masterclass. If you've not yet completed season two, we would recommend that you don't take the masterclass now. And we will be repeating the masterclass next year. So it's the kind of thing that you could continue working on season two, for example, if you're working through season two, and then join us for a future class of the masterclass. This is the class of October 2019. So it is uh, running from October through to March. And the chances are, as of April, or maybe a little after April, we'll be running a new class of the Masterclass. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Gayatri. Um, let me see. Oh, we've got a, a comment here. I'm just going to uh, put this one on. Gavin saying, Soy piloto y vuelvo a España todo el tiempo. Quiero aprender el idioma para poder hablar con los trabajadores del aeropuerto. So Gavin's a pilot, and he flies to Spain all the time. Um, I want to learn the language in order to be able to speak with the workers in the airport. Well, Gavin, if I'm ever on your plane, please say hello. I would love to say hello to you too. En español, claro. Um, so thank you for that. Um, we've got a couple of other comments here about the, the, the motivation. We've got Kathleen saying, I started as, as a beginner toward my lifelong goal of bilingualism in any language, getting ready to take French B2 Delph, uh, thanks to you and CBF. Fantastic or fantastique, <laughs> indeed. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, uh, Barbara saying, que squadra super, thank you. A nice comment about our team. Emilia was saying that she was in Italy, sorry, yeah, Emilia was in Italy last month and loved practicing my Italian. Mo said I have great pronunciation. Uh, thank you. Gayatri saying the volume is very low. Could you increase it? Um, we have tried very hard to get the, the volume working today, and this is as good as we can get it. Um, we had some major problems last week, but this is what we are trying to work on. So um, hopefully you can turn up your, your volume and hear it uh, better. David saying, thanks, Mark. I will regularly listen to the French podcast on my way to work. Any news in German season three? Well, German is the same as Coffee Break uh, Italian at the moment. We're focusing on the magazine. So make sure you're listening to the magazine, David, um, and that will definitely help you. Jake is saying, anytime someone tells me that they're learning a language, I refer them here to Coffee Break Languages. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Jake. We appreciate that. Um, and I think that's us. OK, it's been a, a long edition of this. Uh, coffee break catch up but thank you all for your comments let me just take this off the screen and we'll turn back to our main camera that is it then for this edition of the coffee break catch up we hope that you've enjoyed it a reminder of course that if you would like our newsletter with all the links then you can sign up at radiolingua.com uh, slash newsletter and there you'll be able to access all the links there keep an eye on the website in the coming week because there's some new stuff coming um, we will, of course, have our episode of Coffee Break Italian magazine next Monday. And then there's a new batch of U uh, Coffee Break languages, no, one minute languages courses going out next Wednesday. And of course, our student for Tuesday, our motivation Monday, our question of the week on Thursday. And I think by that time, we'll be back down to Friday for another Coffee Break German magazine. I think I've kind of lost track, though. We're going to stop there. We would like to thank you again for uh, your uh, comments. One final comment there from Barbara. And I would like to share this particular for anyone who's looking for Coffee Break German or Coffee Break Italian season three. Barbara saying the magazines are a great challenge indeed expanding the season lessons. So thank you for that. Grazie mille Barbara. Um, and we are literally just about a few minutes from going back into the studio to record another lesson of the Coffee Break Italian magazine, having uh, done some French earlier um, and a, a Spanish meeting too today. So it's been pretty busy. Thank you for joining us on the Coffee Break uh, Catch Up once again. Um, it has been a pleasure uh, spending some time with you today. And I would like to say thank you, as ever, and goodbye. I just remembered I always need to do that in another language. So let me see. I think we'll go, we were talking about Norwegian earlier today, so I'll go to Norwegian and say tusen takk og hade bra. Thank you, and of course, as ever, happy coffee breaking. Let me see if I can find the button for the closing titles. Here it is. Thank you, and goodbye.